fellas, in the first video of the day, I kind of feel like we have to talk about the Knicks. We have to talk about Julius Randle. We have to talk about the season that they're having, the role that they've been on lately. I don't think we can go any more days without talking about the Knicks, um, you know, their potential playoff push, what they could be in the playoffs, Julius Randle's potential All-NBA case. There's a lot of storylines to talk about with this team, and that's what we're going to be doing in the first video of the day. But really quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day, every single day in this channel, so it's a great place for the most consistent NBA content on YouTube. If you're new here, by the way, what's up? My name is Tucker. You can also leave a like rating on the videos as well, and you can check me out at various socials and a link tree link down in the description below. With those things said, let's talk about the Knicks. Let's talk about Julius Randle. So the Knicks have been kind of an interesting story for a while now, right? And we kind of had checkpoints throughout the year where it was like, oh, we're a couple weeks in and the Knicks are at 500. Oh, we're at the All-Star break and the Knicks are still hanging around 500. But now they've hit a completely different level. Now, as of the recording of this video, the New York Knicks have home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs. They are the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference, which is Kind of incredible. This is a team that I didn't even think was really going to be in contention for the play-in game this year, um, given the roster, given the talent level, given, quite frankly, the coaching staff. And I've been pretty much as wrong as you can be about a team about New York this year. Now, granted, it's not like they're title contenders. It's not like they're 40 and 10, but they're very, very good. You know what I mean? They're a solid NBA team. And in the East this year, that's good enough to get you up to the fourth seat. Um, the first thing I do want to address is just, yes, I was wrong about the Tom Thibodeau thing. I did not think... I, I just, I didn't think he had what it took to be a good modern NBA head coach anymore. You know what I mean? Um, the thing in Minnesota did not work incredibly well. They had one really good stretch, um, you know, with Jimmy Butler there. And apart from that, it just did not go well. It was a similar situation where you're going to a roster that has, uh, you know, a good amount of young players on it. And I just didn't think it was going to work. And granted, a lot of the things that have worked about this have been typical Tom Thibodeau stuff, playing guys a lot of minutes, making sure guys are playing incredibly hard, uh, you know, guarding extremely well. But that's been good enough, you know what I mean, to get this team to the fourth seed. And I'll admit that I was wrong about Thibodeau, uh, you know, for this season and then being the wrong coach for the Knicks, quite frankly. I've, I think I have at least one, maybe two videos on this channel of me talking about the fact that I didn't think he was the guy, and I'm 100% wrong. Um, this team as a whole, it just, again, it's that typical Tom Thibodeau thing where he's going to play his best guys a lot of minutes. They're going to play really hard. They're going to defend. And offensively, they're just going to figure it out. And they're going to try and figure out a way to, to score enough points, you know, to make up for or, or, you know, in connection with just really good defense. Right now, they're one of the best defensive teams in the league in terms of defensive rating. There were some signs early in the year that uh, some of their defensive numbers were a bit of fool's gold in terms of the amount of open shots. They're, you know, the, the teams they were playing were missing and things like that. Uh, but ultimately, they've held steady. They right now have the third best defensive rating in the league. They're one of the best defensive teams in the league. And part of that has to do with effort and things like that. But the other part of that has to do with scheme and personnel. And they're just a very, very good defensive team. Offensively, not so much. They're a bottom set offense in terms of offensive rating. But again, when you're so good defensively, it hasn't really seemed to matter a ton. And they're just out there just put in effort. You know what I mean? This is what they do. Julius Randle, on the other hand, has been nothing short of a revelation for New York this year. I mean, I remember talking about Julius Randle like, you know, his contract was going to get bought out next year because it was a non-guaranteed deal. Or talking about him as a potential future trade piece, you know, for this roster. Never really speaking about him as a long-term part of this group. I remember clowning the, the initial free agency signing along with a lot of other people. Julius Randle was always a guy that was putting up stats, whether it be in New Orleans or otherwise, that never really equated to winning. And of course, that's happening this year. And he leads the league in minutes for one thing. But there's just so many things about Julius Randle this year that are different, that are allowing him to really capitalize on the talent that pretty much has always been there. Like there's a reason this guy was a top 10 pick, right? Um, he's in better shape this year, for sure. He's putting putting in more effort defensively. He, of course, has plenty of opportunities to kind of just do what he wants to do, which certainly helps from a statistical standpoint. Uh, but the two key things here that have kind of unlocked Julius Randle are, one, he's shooting 41% from three on like over five attempts per game, which is a huge, massive outlier improvement this year compared to every other season in his career. It's allowed him to be much more of a perimeter-oriented player at times rather than this bruising inside player, which he can still be. But there's so much more variance and what Julius Randle can and can't do on the offensive end of the floor. 
And then in addition to that, something he's added to his game this year, he's always had a little bit of a sprinkle of it, but whether it's because of the opportunities, the responsibilities, or just an improvement in his own skill set, he's a pretty good playmaker too. Like he's not just going to be driving to the rim and, and only looking for his own shot. He's not going to be someone that is only going to be thinking about himself offensively. He's turned into a relatively unselfish offensive player. And all of those things have resulted in a career year for Julius Randle to the point where when you consider the quote unquote talent on the roster around him, the situation that they were in coming in this year, as well as it being the Knicks and kind of the expectation placed on that group, you could make the case for Julius Randle as an all-NBA caliber player. Now, forward is one of the most stacked positions that we have in the league, and so it's pretty difficult for guys to kind of come out of nowhere and make an all-NBA team, uh, you know, considering the guys that are kind of already there. But you could certainly make an argument, which is kind of crazy because at the All-Star break, I was not advocating for Julius Randle to be an All-Star, you know what I mean? And now we're talking about him as a possible All-NBA guy uh, as the Knicks have now won seven in a row and up towards the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. Now, in the postseason, when it really comes down to it, are we overly concerned about New York? We might be. It, it kind of depends because there's two different ways to look at this. One, they're a nice, interesting regular season team who are outperforming the overall talent level of their roster, right? I mean, when you look at it, it's Julius Randle, it's RJ Barrett, it's some Derrick Rose sprinkled in there and not a whole lot else. And it's just a little bit concerning, you know, how much they're relying on Julius Randle, who again is leading the league in minutes. Um, and you can look at it that way and say, okay, well, they're kind of scraping through some of these games, you know, with defense and things like that. I don't know if it's really going to work. Or you could look at it the other way and say, well, their defense is going to keep a lot of these games close. And as long as the games are close, you never know what can really happen. Um, where I would kind of fall on that would be, you know, a team like Boston, I would feel pretty good in a series against New York about um, just, again, considering the, the the limited offensive talent on the Knicks roster, I think you could make a case that even a team like Atlanta um, with that, you know, high powered offense could just score too many points uh, for, for New York to keep up. And I'm hoping for playoff success. I think the Knicks winning in the first round would be awesome. It would be such a cool cap to this story, but ultimately, I'm not fully confident that they will, uh, but I did want to make sure that I kind of shed some light and showed some praise towards not only this group as a whole, but Tom Thibodeau, Julius Randle, the whole thing. They've been awesome. Now, some things to keep in mind for the future of this group. Randle is going to be a 2022 free agent, which is really, really interesting on multiple different levels here. Uh, one, as I said, it's a non-guaranteed deal for next year that I thought might end up being bought out. Obviously, that's not going to be the case. Um, but like, if Julius Randle was becoming a free agent this offseason, like, would, would, would he be a max contract guy? I mean, I guess he would, right? He's 26, 27 years old. He's in his prime. So what does that mean for 2022 free agency? If he sustains this or even improves on this, is like Julius Randle is going to be a max contract guy in 2022 free agency, I guess? Um, you know, whether that's with New York or otherwise. And so some things to keep an eye on here with Randle. As nice as it's been to have him be the focal point of a resurgence of Knicks basketball here, I would not put it past this front office whatsoever to next year explore the option of trading Julius Randle in two scenarios. One, not wanting to pay him whatever he's going to want to be paid and getting some assets out of him, or as a part of a bigger trade package. One of the criticisms I've had of where the Knicks are at from a front office perspective right now is yes, they have the additional Dallas picks, but they don't really have a lot of key young players that can be kind of moved around on a trade. For example, Bradley Beal trade, right? If you wanted to pair Bradley Beal with somebody. Julius Randle, not that he's going to be the focal point and someone that, you know, is the equivalent of getting like a 20-year-old, you know, top three pick or something, right? But he can be the focal, depending on, you know, what happens with the contract stuff. Maybe Julius Randle's a guy that another team could really, really want. You throw some picks and some young players in there and all of a sudden you're looking at, you know, a pretty nice Bradley Beal trade offer. You know what I mean? So, I would just say that as nice as it's been to have this next season go the way that it has been, be ready for some possible changes that I think ultimately could be positive ones. Um, as they try and build this roster up, they need to continue to develop RJ Barrett. Obviously, Mitchell Robinson being hurt is unfortunate at this moment. Um, and, you know, use these Dallas picks and use some of the stuff they've got going for them to really build on this. Because there's a scenario in which the talent level is kind of bare moving forward and this is just kind of who they are which is fine by the way like if the knicks are the four and five seed in the east the next couple of years i'm pretty sure knicks fans would take that but you also have to consider you know the possible avenues and free agency as well all that stuff we kind of know how this works with the knicks right they've got young players and picks to trade they've got potential free agency stuff but for this season i want to shout them out i want to say fantastic job by the knicks by tom thibodeau uh julius randall I, this is one of the most out of nowhere storylines of the entire season. I, I honestly, in this moment, still can't believe that it's happening, that the Knicks are the fourth seed in the East. And all the credit in the world to them. That's all I can say.
But yeah, that's going to be the end of the first video of the day. And I thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. You can leave a like rating on the videos as well if you're enjoying them. And you can check me out at various socials and a link tree link down in the description below. With all those things said, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Friday. And I will see you all next time.